her. <laughs> See the most upset that I've ever seen <gasps> oh my God. everyone here, which I, I get. Kaylin just tried to put this in the Wii U and it didn't work and took it out. It was like, oh, huh. and then turned it over. It was like, what? <laughs> So, yeah, we all kind of just had that reaction. Everybody I just happened to be holding oh the camera. Oh my god, a moment. That, why? Why would you do this to- How did you do this? Lego Marvel superheroes on Wii U. Like, this is like- Oh my god. This is horrendous. My god. This is like- This is abuse. Why? Oh god. Hello, rad people. It's Sunday. Sunday fun day. And- it's kind of been slow today. School starts back tomorrow, so I think everybody's, you know, getting their final school things done, not out shopping for video games, because they got to study, or about to be studying, I guess. I don't know. I haven't been in school in a really long time. But <laughs> we're kind of having a, a cleaning and fixing stuff, because it's we actually have time to kind of do that today. So I'm going to teach you guys how to repin an NES. So basically, inside of your NES, you know, you have to do the toaster motion and at, over time, those pins kind of loosen up and the re it's the reason that you get constant red blinky light when you're trying to put your NES games in. I mean, there's other causes of that, but replacing the pin connectors will make that happen a lot less often. So I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, so this is what I mean about like, you know, you're doing this for the last 30 years with your cartridge inside and the piece that your game connects to eventually kind of loosens up. So it doesn't make a very good connection. So you have to replace that piece. So the piece for that looks like this. So the bottom part connects to your NES and the top part is where your cartridge slides in. So we're gonna just take this NES apart and replace this little piece and it should work a whole lot better after that. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is flip this guy over, get these all out. Very exciting process of taking all these screws out. I've probably done, I don't know, a hundred million of these in my life because we pretty much just go ahead and redo them on every single NES that comes through here because, I don't know, people often forget that even when these things were new, you kind of had to put your card in and out a million times. So just like to give people as little hard of a time as they can possibly have with an NES, which is still kind of going to be a hard time. Because even with the new pins, you know, sometimes you still have to put them in and out, but not as much. And you know, also another tip, make sure that you're cleaning your games really well because one little tiny speck of dirt can often also make it not work, so. All right, got those out. Flip this guy over, remove the lid. Surprisingly, it doesn't look too bad in here. So, I'm gonna put all my, my screws in the lid for now. So, got your little heat shield here. Take that off. It's easy, this is, once you do it once and get it right, it's like the easiest thing in the world to fix. Just takes, you know, a few minutes of your time. And it's a really good way to keep your customers happy. So they don't have to come back with your, their NES 10 times telling you it doesn't work. Though your only two screws that are different are gonna be these two guys right here. They're a little bit longer. So just remember that, you know, these go on the bottom and then your standard screw will go on the top. So take those out. They're also a different color, so the other ones are kind of goldish, while these are like a, a silver, and they're just slightly longer. It's kind of hard to see, but you know, just. So then, oh wait, we got one more screw I forgot about. Two more, actually. So we're gonna take this off. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, take that one out. And this one down here. 
They're kind of the most hidden, so they're easy to forget about. Take that out. And lift this whole guy up. And so basically, you're gonna just kind of slide this guy off. It just, just comes right off. We'll set this to the side for now. And connector, just pop that guy right off. Set him to the side. I like to take a little bit of Q-tip, uh, a little bit of Q-tip, a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip. Just get this part a good scrub, just while we while we've got it open. Do all that. Sometimes it's a little, it's a little gross. It's not too bad, but you know we like to do it anyway. Cineas is actually pretty clean on the inside. I'm gonna give it a blowout just because there's a little bit of dust, but it's really, really not bad. So let me, let me blow this guy out real quick, and then. We'll put the new pins on. Let me film that. You know, there's a couple little dust bunnies in there, but overall, that's what the, the bottom of an NES looks like. It's pretty pretty bare bones in there. It's not much, not much going on. Just heat shield, motherboard. Here's the bottom there. With all your chips and important things, but you know, it's pretty pretty simple in here. So I'm just gonna blow this out real quick. Got to plug this thing back in. Okay. And it's gone. Okay. Okay. We're going to put this back together. This guy in here. Get our new pins. There they are in all their glory. And then you just slide them on to this bottom piece. I guess I could probably do this facing the camera so you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to move this downwards a little bit more so you guys can see better. Okay, so it just slides onto here. Sometimes you gotta you gotta force it a little bit, but not not too bad. So that's on there now. And then we're gonna put our little tray back in here. Get some of the the dust off of there. Like I said, it's not, this thing was pretty clean on the inside, which is nice because I've opened some up in the past that have been absolutely disgusting. So thank you to whoever had this NES, didn't store it in some gross stuff. All right, so you'll kind of just slide this guy back on over. And sometimes it's kind of a pain to get on there. Kind of got to like wedge it in there a little bit. There we go. So when you get it on there, there's a little lip on here. So make sure, hold on, let's see, let's move that up. Make sure that that lip is going over the outside. Because if you get that wrong, your NES is not going to go back together. So if you end up having the lip like underneath the motherboard, it's, it's not going to work. And you won't figure it out until you get every, try to put the lid back on and then it just doesn't fit. Ask me how I know, years of learning. But yeah, so now take our, our long screws. Okay, we're gonna do the long screws first. Make sure that you are aligned. Those in. Sometimes the holes in the new new pin connectors aren't always drilled out enough, so sometimes that gets kind of weird. But I'm gonna screw these guys back in, make sure that we're all aligned and good. Sometimes. We'll just get a crusty one and I did. scrub it. The a less busted. That was the only one. The busted Mario Painter bust. Yeah. I mean, we can fix that. I am. I am filming. <laughs> it's 
fine. Maybe maybe this will get sped up, or maybe this dialogue will remain in the video. I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put the put the heat shield back on. There's some little like plastic tabs down here. All right, so you want to make sure that these little plastic tabs align. You know, they go. Make sure that your heat shield goes in with that. So it's good. We're gonna put the screws back in. I don't know. We can talk about NES. Talk about your favorite NES games. Mine, besides Mario 2, because that's an obvious, obvious choice. I really love Clue Clue Land, which, if you've never played it, it's a black box game. Um, it's kind of a puzzle game, and you're a little fish, and you just kind of throw, like, slingshot this guy around and collect rings, which sounds really not that interesting as you say it, but it's it's fun. I don't know. I like puzzle games. So, yeah, that's it for me. If you want to comment your favorite NES game, I would love that, because I want to know. Joe's is Captain Skyhawk, which... I think is kind of an unpopular opinion because maybe, I don't know. I don't think any, I've never met another person on this planet who loves Captain Skyhawk as much as my husband, so. Put our lid on, flip them upside down. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're almost there. Sometimes I think I just want to get a drill and do this, but I won't because that's too much power, even for a Nintendo console. Alright, almost done. Okay, we did it. We made it. So now we are going to plug it in and make sure that we were successful. All right, I picked a freshly tested copy of DuckTales, so I know this game works. So we're gonna pop this guy in. So often with the new pin connectors, they're a little bit tight. So you kind of gotta like work the part in here. They'll, they'll loosen up over time like the old ones did, but that's just, that's just part of having the new ones in. And like I said, you know, eventually after putting the cartridge in a few times, it'll loosen back up. So it's down here, we're gonna click it down, turn it on. And wow, it works. First try, amazing. So yeah, that's how to make your NES work a whole lot better. NES is good to go, clean on the inside. And now we're just gonna scrub the outside real quick and then it'll be good to put on the shelf, ready to go. I'm just gonna take some simple green and a toothbrush, give it a little scrubby. It's a little dirty, but you know, it's also really old. It's not nearly as bad as some of the crust we've encountered, even to some of the crust we've encountered today. So, you know, we just like to give everything a nice, good scrub so it goes home to someone nice and clean and working. It's also a little bit scuffed up, so it's not going to be perfect because there's like physical gouges in this thing. I don't know if it got dropped or what happened, but works just fine. It's just got a little bit of a little scar on there. I don't know, but we'll get the dirt off. That I can't do anything about. That's just, you know, be a little bit discounted for a cosmetic flaw. And wow, looks great. How to fix an NES. Uh, amazing, wow. Hello, it is I, the Shop Mouse. We got in a really nice God of War PS4 Pro today, but the controller's kind of crusty. So I'm gonna clean them for you and you get to watch. Look at how much better it looks already. It's 
like beautiful and pristine and clean now. And now we get to do the one that actually goes with the PS4. So this one wasn't as bad as the white one, but already major improvement, very beautiful. Now I get to scrub the, con the console. The aftermath of crust. And now, get to wipe off the console. At the end of the world, there's something I can learn. Some good ideas will pop up. And with that, she is now beautiful and ready to go to a new home. Um, whether you're trading in your things or not, cleaning them regularly is a really good idea because a lot of times if you're having issues with stick drift, it's because there's gunk in your, in your joysticks. So just clean your stuff. It'll make you happy. It'll make your stuff last longer. It's good for you. It's good for everyone. And if you don't clean your electronics, the shop mouse will get you. Thanks for coming along with our crusty and broken journey today. <laughs> We're all a little tired. I say we all, it's just me. Um, I went and saw Hawthorne Heights last night, lived my best emo life, so no, I think I'm exhausted. The was accurate. But yeah, so we, you know, we cleaned some stuff. If you guys want to see some more cleaning videos, let me know. We can get into some grosser stuff, which I was going to try to do today, but I just didn't end up having any time. But I, I got some really crusty PS3s that I can take apart if you guys want to see that. Or if you don't, then that's cool too. Make sure that you like and subscribe and leave a comment about something or other and we'll see you next time stay right all right so thanks for uh, i don't know not that